Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements dashed line video, I'll be showing you not only dashed lines, like around the outside here, but also dotted lines and line fills and dotted lines around shapes as well. If you enjoy this video, make sure that you click that like button and also subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn everything about Photoshop Elements, look at my complete training, and you'll find the link for that at the top of the description. Okay, let's get to it. We'll start this project off with a brand new file. So I'll just close that. There we are. Go up to File, New, Blank File. Now, I have this set at the default Photoshop Elements size, and then I just reversed these two numbers. So I set the width at 4 and the height at 6. That actually is a good size for greeting cards or vertical greeting cards. Now, if your image comes in floating, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be docking mine and leaving it docked for the rest of this video. So there we are. Let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. And let's make sure that our rulers are showing. So I'll come up here to View. And if they're not showing, click on Rulers so your rulers are showing. There's our four inch width up here. Now I need guidelines in here across the top both sides and the bottom. So let's put our guides in. Go up to View, come down to New Guide. Let's do our vertical guides first. That's the up and down guides. The first one I want to have at 0.25. So let's type in 0.25. That's a quarter inch in from the left-hand side. There we go. And I want one over here that's a quarter inch in from this side. So that will be 3.75. So view, come down to new guide, and then 3.75. Seven five, there we are. Let's put one in the top and the bottom guides. View, new guide. Change the orientation here to horizontal. Our first one is at 0.25, quarter inch down from the top. The bottom one down here is going to be 5.75. It's a six inch, so take off 0.25. It's 5.75. View, new guide and 5.75 just like that. There we go. There's our guides. We'll be using those to put in our first set of lines in here. Once that's in, everything else is kind of built from that first set of lines. Now to do this, I want to also put in some special colors over here for the foreground and background. Click on the foreground color and I'll be using a light blue for this. You know, any place in here is fine. It doesn't really matter exactly what it is. If you want to be a complete exact match to what I'm doing, then the number that I used in down here, the hexadecimal number, was 6DD0FE. Right there. Again, it's right in the, the light blue range. Top is full saturation and it's kind of pushing towards the light over here. Choose OK. So that's our foreground. Background, click on the background color right there. And the background is a yellow, kind of a, a, an orange yellow. Anything in here will be fine for that. Again, the number that I used on this one is FFE641. Right there. FFE641. And there we are. Just a, a light blue and a slightly darker than bright yellow. And they're both kind of pushed down just a little bit. So there's our basic colors. Now for the dots up here, I'm going to zoom in on this. You can really see this. There we go. The very top up here. We're we'll putting our dots right across this line right here. And we'll be doing that with the paintbrush. So go to the paintbrush. And I'll set this paintbrush back to the default brushes. There we go and just choose one of the hard brushes like this 19 hard is a good start double click on that 19 hard set the brush size to 35 you can see there's the size of that as a dot it's right here and then you can just you know paint in your lines this way now a couple things about this obviously we want this as dots and not a solid line we also don't want this kind of all over the place. We want it exactly across that line here. Let me show you that trick first. It's real easy. What you do is you find your beginning spot, 
hold the shift key down and then drag I actually connected that let me try it down over right here shift key down and there you go see it just connects those two dots try it again here click and if you drag you can drag straight lines or you can do vertical or you can do lines exactly at a specific angle it gives you these nice straight lines another shortcut is if you click once just like that make a dot come over here click a second time and it gives you a straight line between those two points what I like to do is I just like to hold click and then drag it clear across and get a real nice straight line okay let's just undo all this stuff here I'm just going to do control Z to back out of all this stuff there we go okay so that's it that's how to do a nice straight line but we want to have this thing not as a line like this but as a series of dots we do that with our brush settings right here click on brush settings and where it says scatter and space down below is spacing if we pull the spacing over you see what happens down here it begins to separate into dots just like that so you actually can get this to come out as dots you can choose what level of dots you want how far the spacing you want just by adjusting this spacing let's just set this one starting off at 150 there we go close out for a second now if I paint I get a series of dots but I also want to have this fading between these two different colors kind of a multi fade color thing we can do that also with brush settings where it says hue jitter take this and just pull it clear to the right at hundred percent and close that down now when you paint it kind of goes through and cycles through those two colors and colors in between those two colors okay we're all set now I'll just do the control Z again get rid of those come up here I'll make a new layer just like that new layer button come right over this point hold the shift key down and then click and drag straight across and stop at that point now if your science is all correct it'll line up real nice like that it just you know an exact fit now it won't necessarily be an exact fit we, we kind of looked out on this one but I'll show you how you can take care of that and that's why I'm putting these things on different layers so we can get an exact fit each time okay let's just scroll to the bottom to the exact same thing down here and let's do a new layer and come over to your starting position and pull over like that and there's your bottom line of dots let's just name these double click on the layer call that one top dots double click on this one this is going to be bottom bottom dots there we are all right now let's do our sides I'm going to zoom out let's fit on screen so you can see it a bit better there we go top and bottom dots you want to come in just just below that dot and pull straight down and then pull down over here now something else I have snap in here working view come down to snap to and snap to guides is like I almost always have my left at that setting so I have my guides on the, those those blue guides and then snap to has guides selected that way when I'm pulling across that it snaps right to that line and gives me an exact straight line right along that line okay let's go ahead now and do our left side and make a new layer there we go come in just below that top dot just about there hold the shift key down pull straight down this I can even pull from out here and this will work in the let go it's not quite an exact match down there we'll fix that in just a second so that's the left dots there we are one more layer right side same thing over here just below that dot hold the shift key and pull that straight down to the bottom there we go okay and this is the right dots so John four dotted lines now they're all in their own layers which allows us to do a little bit of adjustment on this I'm going to zoom in this is a little bit of a cheat but that's okay it'll work out fine so this is this right dots I'm just gonna use my down arrow on this one just tap it down just a little bit until that spacing looks good that looks fine let's now come down to the bottom and check the bottom and it's a little bit off down here 
So we're just going to stretch this. That's the right dots. Grab that arrow right there, just pull that down until it goes right in behind that other dot. It's such a small stretch that you won't notice the change in the shape. It actually is going to be stretching the dots a little bit, but again, it's so short, you're not going to even see that amount of distortion. So that fixes that side. Let's go to the left-hand side. This is our left dots right there. Back to the top. And again, using the down arrow on the keyboard, I'm just going to tap this down a little bit until the spacing looks good up there. That's fine. Let's come down to the bottom. And then let's just pull this down just a little bit until it's just in behind that other dot. Now there's something strange right there. I'm going to zoom in. I'm not really sure what that is. So we have two overlapping dots in there. Not sure how that happens. See if we can find what that dot is. I'm just going to show and hide the left. And it's actually on this left layer. So somehow it's done something kind of weird on that one. I'm going to fix this by erasing that and just putting something else in its place. So you can come in and do that as well. Just grab our eraser tool here and on my left dots, you know, show and hide to double check. There we go. Let's just erase that out of there. And I'll grab, I think right down here, I'll do a little marquee around this. This is the bottom dots. That's right there. Let's do a layer, new, via copy. There's our new layer. I'll pull this up here above the left dots. And then use my move tool. And let's just grab that move, that copy dot, and stick it right there. Okay, that fixes that. You know, you'll find occasionally little odd things like that will happen. You just go ahead and just little clean up on them. Okay, there we go. There's our nice dotted line. Let's now do our dashed line outside. The same concept holds, but we need a different kind of brush for that. First off, let's just merge these two layers here with that fix. So I'll hold the shift key down, click on the left dots. Now these are both selected. Right click over the name, and let's merge those layers and then I'll rename this. And there that fixes that. Okay, now let's go and do our top. And the top I'll explain to you the process and then we'll repeat the rest of this very, very quickly. So I want to have dashed lines using the same colors in here, the same color scheme. That's fine. You can change it if you want to, but I'll leave it the same. Paintbrush, there's our dots. What we need is a different brush. So click on the icon right here brings up the brushes and where it says default brushes click on that and come down here a ways and you'll find square brushes right down there. So scroll down a ways. We're using a 35 pixel brush. The biggest one that's down here is 24 so click on 24. Reset that to 35 and there's our 35 square brush. Go over here to your layers and let's do a new layer above the dots right there. I need to space this out again, so it's brush settings. And we had hue jitter all the way to the top. And let's bring our spacing up a bit. There we go. There's, let me just type in that 150 that we used. There's 150. Now there are squares at this point. I want dashes. So to have dashes, make it only half as tall as it is wide. You can do that right here with the roundness. Bring this back down to 50 like that. So it's half as tall as it is wide and they're now dashes. Now with dashes the space in here is not quite big enough so I'm going to increase my spacing up here. Maybe 175. A little nicer spacing on those. And there we go. So a an adjustment on the roundness and then an adjustment on the spacing. Everything else left the same. You can see there it is our nice little shape. I'm going to start this out here kind of halfway between this line and the edge of the, the paper and just outside. And again, hold the, the shift key down, pull that across, and there's our first line. Okay, and this is top dash. Top dashes, there we go. Let's do our bottom dashes, go clear to the bottom. Same thing, come about halfway between the edge and that line over here on the outside. Let's make a new layer. There's our layer one. Hold the shift key down and pull to the right. 
and there we go. Now again, they're a little bit off, that's fine. We'll adjust that as our last step. So that's bottom dashes. New layer, and this time let's go ahead and zoom out to full screen again so you see what we're doing. Back to our paintbrush, and then now if I put my line in right now, the line is going to come in with the dashes this way. You can see that the dash brush will come in with the dashes this way instead of being vertical. So you need to change our brush settings on that. Brush settings. I want to change the angle in here. I want to have the long part up and down and the wide part left and right. You can just grab this little arrow right here and just pull the arrow around or just type in negative 90 or 90 either way and close that down. Notice how it's changed that brush direction. I'm going to zoom in so you can see that a bit better here. See, it's now a tall brush instead of a wide brush. Okay, back to fit on screen. Same thing, back to our brushes. Come just, just down below that top one there. Hold the shift key and pull straight down towards the bottom. There we go. And that's going to be left dashes. And then one more layer, final layer, right hand side, same thing. Hold the shift key down, pull straight down towards the bottom. And that is the right dashes. Okay, let's now clean things up. We'll zoom in towards the top up here. It's our top dashes right there. Using the left and right arrow keys, I'm just going to kind of tap this over a bit so it's a little bit better spacing so it's kind of even left and right that looks pretty good the spacing in here and in here looks okay the left and right spacing here maybe it's a little bit to the left this spacing looks okay so our left dash is right there again the right arrow I'll just tap over just a couple of spots like that and that fits that space better now if you want to have this coming out so it exactly touches the edges of those you can do that again just go to the dashes, that's our top dashes here, and then stretch that out. You just can kind of pull the edges out if you want. There you go, and it's just out to match those, those edges there. So you can adjust that. And then look at the bottom. A little off, I need one more dash down here, I'm kind of missing a dash here. That's pretty close down there. Let's look at our bottom dashes first, and arrow keys and I'll tap this over to the right a little bit until they look pretty well centered. There we go. Now I need an additional dash and I'm missing one dash up here. So we're just going to copy and paste a dash on that side. So zoom in a little bit. There we go. Again grab the rectangular marquee tool and then let's scroll up a little bit find a different color. There we go. I like that one. So our left dashes I'll just select that and then layer new. There it is via copy. This time I'm going to be using the move tool and then just using the arrow keys, the down arrow key. I'll just tap that down or just hold it and then just kind of walk on down. It makes it that exactly in line. So it only is going up and down, it's not changing anything else. And I'll pull it down until it's about the right spacing looks pretty good right about there. Okay, let's go back to our bottom dashes and then I'll pull this to the left. What I'm doing is actually stretching the left hand out. Let's check the right hand side. Same thing, just stretch it this way just a little bit so the edges line up. And there we go. That takes care of the first set of dots and the first set of dashes. Nice and easy. So that's how you do dotted lines and dashed lines by using the paintbrush. Let's now do something a little bit different. I want to put a shape in here, my big frame shape. And with that, let's go to the top of our stack. There we are. Come down to Graphics. And I'm in Shapes. There it is, Shapes. And just scroll down. It's quite a ways down. I'm using the wheel on my mouse right now to scroll down. It's quite a ways down. We're going to be grabbing a shape and just dropping it into the middle of that page. And they're almost, almost down there now. I guess right down near the bottom of this whole set. There we go. 
right there. It's kind of near these snowflakes. Right there, it's called square frame. Now, before I put this in, let's change our, our colors. I'm going to set them back to their defaults. Click on that little arrow right there, back of the defaults. Click on our foreground color, and I'll put it right in the middle of the grays, left-hand side. If you're in here someplace, just drag to the left and put it right about in the middle. It doesn't have to be exact, but there you go, all sevens. That's six sevens if you want to. There we are. Nice mid-tone gray. Double click on that and it drops that onto the page. Now let's maneuver that just up near the top, just a bit of space in there, and we'll drag this out so that it's about the same space on the right, and then drag the bottom down, and there we go. So we're just putting in this nice gray frame shape right in the middle of the page, leaving a bit of space on all sides. Okay, now let's do the trick on this one to give this a line pattern instead of just a solid gray pattern. You do that up here with the filter and come down to the filter gallery right there. Now you need to rasterize the shape. Right now it's just a shape. It has to be rasterized or simplified to make it into an editable shape. Either click here to rasterize it or right click on the name and come down to simplify layer. There we go. Make sure you're not seeing that little box down there. That's simplified. Okay, filter, filter gallery. There we go. The filter you're looking for is in the sketch section right here. Open that up. And it's the halftone pattern right there, halftone pattern. Now, the size I have set at 4 and contrast set at 50 and the pattern type set at line. So we have circle effect. There we go. And a dot effect and the line effect. Now the contrast on the right hand side will get real sharp lines. If you go to the left hand side of this you'll have kind of soft more fuzzy lines in there. So contrast clear to the right, keep the lines as sharp as you can. On the size, the smaller the size the thinner the lines. The larger the size, the thicker the lines. There you go, real thick lines. But for this project we'll leave this at four. So there we go. Sketch, halftone pattern, size 4, contrast 50, and pattern type line. There it is. Nice lines. Let's now zoom in just a bit, and I want to check one thing. And that's the left to right spacing. It looks like there's a little more space over here than over here. It's not much at all. But I'm going to use my right arrow key just a couple of taps. Maybe just the one tap kind of center that nicely. Okay, now we want to have this a nice blue and not this color. An easy way to recolor this is to do a layer on top of this and then blend the color into this. So, let's go up here to Layer, come down to New Fill Layer and Solid Color. And where it says Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask, click on that, choose OK, and we get a solid color. So if I choose a different color in here, Notice so I, I can recolor that layer just like that, just that easy. The nice thing about this is I can go through here and try all kinds of different colors just by sliding this back and forth. It makes it really easy to change the colors. What we want is somewhere in here someplace. Now the color that I actually used on mine, I'll just type this in, is 03B3 three again F5 right there. So we're almost to the top up here. It's pretty bright blue. Choose OK. Now you're looking at that and you're saying, OK, it's nice, it's blue, but where'd the lines go? So you need to blend this layer into this layer as well as clipping it into the layer. So we're on our layer still. Go to the blend modes and come down to overlay. And there we go. That puts the color only in the gray lines and leaves the white lines alone. So there's our nice striped or lined shape. So that's how I can put lines into a shape. Real useful trick. Works with any shape at all. And again, the color allows you to double click on this color. I can then change this color to anything I want. I'm just going to copy that first. There we go. Copy my actual color. But I can now just come in and try all kinds of different colors very quickly. 
until I find the one that I want. So it's real nice having this thing as a layer. It makes it really easy to adjust your colors. Okay, I'll just put back in my original and paste. And there we go. Okay, that takes care of that part of it. Let's just zoom back out now, see how we're doing. Okay, dots and dashes outside, line fills on our shape. Let's put some text in and our graphic of this one. Let's do our graphic first. That's real quick and easy. Go to graphics and change this over to graphics. So it's graphics and graphics. Here we are. It's all the pictures, all the clip art. And I'm just scrolling up from the bottom now. And we'll go until we find that birthday cake. And that's up here just a little ways. It's not too far up, I don't believe. There's not a lot in the graphics section anyway. So keep on going to find our birthday cake. There it is. And we'll bring that in. There's the cake. And let's bring our size up a little bit in here. We'll adjust the size exactly a little there, maybe a little wider here, I think. There we go. We'll do a final adjustment on that once we have other stuff in place. Okay, birthday cake. Now it's a little bit dull looking. I'm going to zoom in. It's kind of pastel-y on this one. Obviously it's a bit of older clip art. So I want to have this a brighter, more exciting. Go to our layers and we'll do that. There's the cake. We'll do the adjustments here with another adjustment layer. So layer, adjustment layer, and levels. Again, where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask, check that, choose OK. That way it only acts on this one layer. And I'll just pull up the black side here up to about, oh, 30, 35 maybe. And what that does is it just increases the contrast of the dark colors. If I show and hide that, there it is without, and there it is with. It just gives a little bit more interest, a little more, more punch to the cake. So it's a cake with punch. Excuse the bad jokes, but there we are. So that takes care of the cake. All right, now let's put in our happy birthday across the top up here. Let's add a new layer on top. There we go. And come down to our type tool. I'm going to change the colors back to the defaults. Foreground, background right there. And let's change the typeface here. And the one that I like is called Show Card, and it's up here just a little bit. It's a real standard typeface. There's a good chance you already have it on your computer. If you don't, it's easy to find on the internet. Just do a search for a show card gothic font and you'll find lots of places for the download this. Click on that and let's just type this in. See, it's a show card gothic right there. Real nice looking typeface, real nice bold typeface, which is good for these kind of cards. Okay. Now it's all uppercase, so you don't have to hold shift key or anything. Happy birthday, there we go. Now we need to get this sized properly, and we also want to change the color on that and give it a curve. So quite a few little things to do in here on this typeface. So first I'm going to triple click on the text, which will select our whole text, and let's set our size at 38 point instead of 24. Notice how this is kind of bunching up. Let's change the letting here to auto and that fixes that. You might want to go a little bit tighter than that. Let's try 36, just a little bit tighter. There we go. And choose OK. So there's the size is correct now. Let's adjust the color on this. Now I'll do the same trick for the colorizing here that we did for these lines, making it easy to change our color anytime we want. So we'll do another layer above this layer. Like that. Just do a fill layer on this one, go up to Layer, come down to New Fill Layer, and Solid Color. Choose OK. There we are. Now on this one again, I want kind of a blue in here. And the blue that I used, let me just type this in, was 009CFF. Right there. Almost a pure cyan, a little darker than a pure cyan, but there we go, just nice bright blue, choose OK. There we go. Now right click where it says Color Fill 2, right click on that and come down to Create Clipping Mask. 
and it puts that blue into the letters. Let's now put a white outline around the letters. And that's back down here on the type layer. And for that we're going to be using a layer style. So layer and layer style. Style settings. And that's stroke right here. Change the color. Click on the color and just drag upper left hand corner. Get the pure white. Choose OK. And then let's increase the size of this. Now if you're working on Photoshop Elements 15, for whatever reason it'll say outside, but it really is inside, so just make sure you change that back to outside. And let's set this at 16 and choose OK. Give us a nice large white outline, makes it real easy to read the text against those thin lines in the background. Okay, now all we need to do is put a bend on this thing. So back to the Type tool. There we go. So we can select our type. Just triple click. Come down here. Create warped text. On the style, we want arch, which is right there. There's a big arch type. It's at plus 50, which is actually what I used. So there we go. So arch, horizontal, plus 50. Choose OK. Check OK there. You can then pull that down until it's in a nice position. Just kind of, you know, visually get that where you want it. If you watch those little open spaces in there, try to guess you're not getting anything really weird happening in there. That looks pretty good. Okay, let's now zoom back out again, fit on screen. And I think at this point we can move the cake up a little bit. So here's our cake. I'll pull the cake up a bit. And I think a little bit darker on the darks, so let's double click on the levels. And let's bring that up a bit further. Maybe about, about 75, I think. Just a bit more contrast on the dark end of things. And close that. So there is without and there is with. It just adds again a bit of excitement, more excitement to that by having it more contrasty. Okay, there's our text. There's our cake. All we need now is our little cutout down below here. So let's zoom in towards the bottom this time. And this will be a third way of putting dashes or dots around a shape. Let's go to the very top. Here we are. Make a new layer at the top. We're here to the shape tool. And the one I have is the rounded rectangle. I have the radius set at 50 pixels. Color set at black. Let's change the color to white. And it's unconstrained. Okay, that's all good. And I'll go just over here somewhere and I'll pull down this rounded rectangle shape kind of like kind of like that. Right in there somewhere. Looks pretty good. So that gives us a nice shape. Now we want to put a dotted line around this. So let's first go to our colors. I'll click on the default color settings and resets the colors. Let's go over here to our type. And I'll leave all these the same just for a second. You notice if I come over here and get this kind of a cursor with a round around, that will give me type inside of a shape. From outside, I'll get a new type layer out here. But from right against the line, notice I get this kind of a, a curved line thing happening right on that line there. So inside, you get the round circle. Outside, you get a square. And right on the line, get that kind of a line. Okay, make sure that the type is set here for center text. And then at that point, I'm just going to click on this. And notice how it makes text that follows around the outside of that shape. Let's just cancel that. So you can make text around the outside of the shape. Now the thing is we don't want text, we want dots. And I'll show you how you can find or get those dots. First off, let's change our size. We needed a smaller size for this. I already happen to know what that is. So let's set this down at eight points on our size. I'll set the letting back to auto. And then the typeface we want, we scroll down here. There's some typefaces called wingding and webding typefaces. They're dingbat typefaces. They're symbols. You can see we're 
right there, there's a symbol typeface. It just has pictures in it. When you want here is Wingdings regular at eight point. Now to find the right shape for this, we'll bring up a special tool. Click on the start menu, it brings up this little thing here. Click on all programs. I'll scroll way down and Windows accessories. They move this around sometimes. Right now I'm in Windows 8. And click on character map and it brings this thing up. It's in Wingdings. That's what we had selected right down here. And there's all these nice little shapes. Notice right here is a little scissors shape. And then right over here is a dot. There you go. Click on what you can see that. Click on select. It gives you a dot right there. Click on copy. And then let's go back here. Okay. Right in the middle, I'll come down until it's just got that little strange shape. Click there. And then using the control V keyboard shortcut, I can paste in that dot. Now if I just keep on doing that, hit the control V, I'm just holding the control key down. I'm just tapping on the V. It's going to give me this line of dots going all around the shape. So there we are. We are making dots around a shape. This easy. Just repeating that one dot character over and over again. Now I don't want these meeting at the bottom. I'll leave a little bit of space in here. About like that. That looks pretty good. Choose OK. So there we go. There's our dots around our shape. OK. Now I want to put scissors down here. So let's make a new layer. We're still on Wingdings. Back to our Type tool. We're still on Wingdings. That's fine. Let me bring back up that character map. And we're up here. Here's our scissors. First, I'm going to get rid of this. I'll just select that, hit the backspace, and delete that. Let's go to the scissors and select. There it is. Copy. Now, to do this, we're on a new layer, but click away from your shape. If you click on the shape, it's going to be putting your text inside your existing text. So come outside someplace. Insertion point there. And then Control V. It pastes in that symbol. Choose OK. You can now grab that, pull that down here, and then simply grab the corner and resize this. And come outside of a corner and spin that around like that and then kind of drop that in here right next to that dashed shape. So there we go. Little symbol showing how to cut that out with our scissors. Okay, last thing. Put our text inside here, but it looks like our spacing is just a little bit off, so I'll come down to my shape down here. And again, I'm on the move tool and using my left arrow, I'm just going to tap this over just a little bit and let's go to the dots and bring those back into place again. Or you could select both and move those together. Just kind of just looking at the spacing here and the spacing here, making sure that that's even. There we go. Looks good. Okay, all we have left to do now is our type inside. So new layer. The reason why I always do a new layer like this when I'm putting in a type layer is because if, my, if I'm on a type layer like that, it'll put the text in that same layer. You want to have the text on a new layer. This will be converted to a type layer as soon as we choose our text. So here we go. Let's change our typeface. And we'll just choose a standard typeface for this one. Times New Roman is a good one. Here's Times New Roman bold. Looks pretty good. I'll choose that. And then change the size to 24 point. There we go. Times New Roman bold, 24 point. Come outside of the shape. If you click on the shape, it'll put the text back into that line of dots. You don't want that. So come outside somewhere. Look for the square around your shape. There it is. I'll just type in good for one birthday wish and drag that down. Now it's on top of that layering behind. That looks a little bit wide between these two lines, just visually, it's a little wide. Go back to the Type tool, select all your type, or triple click to get all your types selected. And on the leading, let's change the leading 
There's 24. That looks pretty good. It's just closer. I just, I just matched the size and the letting are matched. Looks a little bit better. There we are. So there it is. There's your good for one wish. And that finishes off the card. And they can go fancier if you want to on this. You can make your type bigger, different typeface. You can even spin the uh, typeface if you want to like that. I kind of like it flat personally. Let me just put this back into zero here. But there we go. Okay, let's go ahead and look at our finished project. Let's come down to the bottom, get rid of any lines in there, and let's hide those guides. There we go. I think I'll float this and we'll zoom in a bit. There we go. So, several ways of making lines. We have our dotted lines, our dashed lines using the paintbrush. We have our lined fill using the filter gallery and we have our dots around a shape down there using the type tool following a shape. So there it is. Creating dashes and dots and a bunch of other stuff here inside of Photoshop Elements giving us a nice happy birthday card. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.